PowerPoints, power lunches, conference calls, reply to all, endless meetings, constant check-ins, and so much wasted time. Are you sick of the BS? So are we. It's time to take our time back, rework the way we work, and make every call a call to action. This is a podcast for people who want to stop talking and really start connecting. This is After 12. Ladies and gentlemen out there in quarantine land, welcome back to After 12. I am uh, Adam Voss, your quarantined host, and with me always is my co-host Josh Rush. Hello, hello. Wave to the camera, Josh. Hi. Um, it's been several months since uh, we recorded uh, the last podcast version of After 12, but the series is really all about innovative brands that have compelling messages, products, and bring something more to the, the market that we live, work, and play in. Uh, and today we're very happy um, to have with us Mr. Stephen Kars, co-founder of King of Pops, live from Atlanta, Georgia. Say hello, Stephen. Hello. All Let's right. See if this works. Well, um, yeah, thank you for joining the podcast and, uh, you know, technical difficulties aside, really appreciate um, your time today. Um, let's just start with a little background. So in 2010, you and your brother Nick started this really smart, different popsicle company based in Atlanta. And you really built that into a food distribution company, um, all sorts of different things. Just give me, give me a, a kind of a the quick look uh, from 2010 to, to today in 2020. The quick look, oh man, that's a that's a fun one. Uh, quick look started in 2010. Um, I had just gotten laid off, so it was a familiar but not as intense situation for most of the world. I uh, started King of Pops with a push cart on a street corner in Atlanta. Um, kind of did that for two, three years, expanding a little bit, trying to figure things out. Uh, started a farm, started a distribution company when we weren't happy with the distribution companies we were using. Um, started a bar a couple years later to sell pop tails and popsicles to people of different ages. and. Um, Kind of been going after it in that same way ever since. I'm sure there's some things along the way. We started doing a lot of composting a couple years ago with a company here in Atlanta called Compost Now. So we've got King of Compost going on out at our farm as well. Um, so yeah, trying to stay really busy and then in, in warp speed, uh, as we approach our 10th birthday on April 1st, we're probably going to reinvent about two other businesses. So. <laughs> Uh, just, just doing all that, just doing all that stuff. So, and, and kind of coming up to that, you and your brother were recently awarded supplier of the year from Whole Foods. Tell, tell us about that. Yeah. So, uh, didn't know it was an award until we got it. So that's always, that's always exciting. But, uh, basically every year, uh, they choose a supplier from each of the regions. Uh, we're in the South region. Um, and then some of the global as well. And, um, you get to go down to Austin. They put you up in a hotel, um, and yeah, we basically won. Just we've been kind of maybe more like a lifetime achievement award. No like crazy growth or anything, but we've always been a good partner to uh, the other brands. We kind of through P10 our distribution piece. We kind of mentor a lot of up and coming brands, um, and are always kind of a sounding board or a place for people to. Uh, come to if they've got questions about what they're doing and then um, I mean King of Pops specifically we're always working with them to get uh, Different ploys going whether it's a specific flavor for a store opening or uh, Something else like that. So they're, they're obviously a really important part of our business um, and It was cool to get recognized in that way just because Oh, it's nice to get an award. We, we started getting, giving out more awards after it. Like, why don't we give a supplier of the year award? So now we do. So, I mean, going into early February 2020, you guys were feeling great. Things were good. You're, you're being recognized from your, for your work in the last 10 years. And then, um, then, then the big bomb of COVID-19. Tell, tell us how how that's affected you, how you've been able to pivot, like you, you're talking about reinventing yourself and, and just the state of the union today. 
Yeah, so I mean, State of the Union, this was the year we were going to hit 10 million. We were about a couple hundred short in 2019, so we were pretty sure we were going to be able to do that with what we had lined up. Um, we had brought down these trainers from Michigan called Zing Train, so investing in our people in a way and that we kind of hadn't really done, which like looking at those bills now just seems super frivolous, but uh, we were just lined up for our best year yet. We were going to give out a bunch of birth pops on our 10th birthday, do all kinds of silly little things, and then this thing comes. So, uh, Stephen, how many how many employees? How many full time employees? At Kick pops got about 30, um, and we let go. Of, we furloughed about a little less than 100 uh, part time people about right. nine, seven days ago, I guess, um, as the stay home it happened. But so the way our business is set up. It's about a third of it is grocery, mom pumps, kind of stores. Yep. A third of it's retail, which is like events, like music festivals, farmers markets. And a third of it's like caterings, like bar, mitz bar mitzvahs, weddings, uh, corporate events. So two of those thirds are just gone. Like you're literally not allowed to, we would not go to an event that has 10 or less people. And those are the lot of events that are allowed. So uh, those two thirds are just shot like that. Uh, the Whole Foods piece is interesting because They've got a lot of, uh, grocery in general just has a lot of hurdles to get enough food in the door as uh, people are eating a lot less at restaurants, et cetera, et cetera. So we're looking to be able to handle a little bit of a spike there, but we don't know if it's one week, one month, one year. I think that's the hardest thing to plan around is we have really no idea the length of this uh, interruption, if you will, or is it just not an interruption yeah, I, no. I don't want to even consider that, but yeah, who knows? But I mean, certainly now having the food distribution arm of your company, I mean, when you started it, it was, you know, it was like, well, we could we could grow. This is a great growth platform. But now, I mean, it's it's kind of like subsist, a, subsist, a subsistence platform. Excuse me. Um, it's funny because you know Josh and I and the company that underwrites Twelve for Twelve Echelon. Um, we, you know, we were kind of the same thing. We were a traditional experience and event company that did trade shows and conferences and whatnot. But we knew, you know, six, seven years ago, it's like, okay, we need to start pivoting to do digital content to make more stuff that doesn't just exist in that moment. Um, so yeah. kudos to you guys. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the diversification is interesting, right? So we're not doing the thing that we know how to make the most money on. And then uh, the distribution is now pretty busy. And then beyond that, I mean, and like the farm, we're just, we just changed from the fruit to just stuff that will feed people. So plan on having that be more focused on getting food to food banks and different people that might need things if things are a little bit different in one, two, three months. Um, and how, so, how, how has the farm grown since? Because we were down there, what, two years ago? June, now? Yeah, yeah, it was June of 2017, three years almost. Three well, it's years like a ago. different place. I mean, farms are slow, so that's like the one thing about them. You can't like hurry anything up, especially if you're trying to be uh, thoughtful and organic and all those nice things. Um, sure. But it looks beautiful. And like, uh, whereas I think when you were there, we probably had five acres of things planted, maybe not even that much. We probably got 35 um, mainly focusing on perennials, so blackberries, blueberries, uh, pears, figs, things that uh, you plant once and come back year after year instead of annuals that we have a lot of work that we quite frankly um, don't have the manpower to do. Well, it's funny. I mean, see, okay, so you, you're seeing uh, an increase in grocery and all the companies that are consumer packaged goods, they're, they're jamming out. So again, P10, you're right there with the stuff that you're doing that's stock hardy, um, you know, grains or, you know, you know, power bars, granola bars, kind yeah. of stuff like that. But like, I also think, you know, I, I read that like gun sales are up and alcohol sales are up and, and Josh and I, you know, we, we were trying to like, institute a company-wide like drinking pause um, <laughs> and it's like totally over now and I think about sitting um, with you and Nick drinking pop tails um, yeah. at, Pont, at Pont City Market what's the state of that can you bottle those can you send them to my house if I give you my address right now <laughs> it's kind of the wild wild west I think there's some people that are going for it with the alcohol delivery they've definitely loosened it up here in Atlanta where you can do Atlanta uh, alcohol pickup 
Right. We are like innovating pretty fast. So we have a build your own pop kit that we're selling um, and mm. encouraging people to do their own uh, pop tails, if you will, uh, bring your own booze. Um, and we have like, like you said, hardier things. So the pop sales aren't really up that much in grocery. They're not down, but the things like grits and peanut butter and like you said, energy bars and stuff, all of those sales are uh, going really good. So these are other people's brands that we're able to kind of help out and, and it helps us obviously as well. So yeah, it's been, it's been fascinating just to try to figure things out. We've gone from doing almost no delivery, um, we did a little shipper that you could ship and it would land on your box to, we're now kind of mobilizing our fleet and people to deliver straight to door. So if you go yes. on like Amazon Fresh right now, um, the wait times are like between three and 10 days, same with yeah. Instacart and all that. So we don't have the same offerings like toilet paper, which is I think like the buzziest buzzword you can say right now. We don't have that, but we do have a lot of good food that we can bring to people and people that can bring it. So uh, we're launching an online store um, that will have more than just pops probably by this weekend. Um, nice. Excited about that, and, and I think that's. I think it's going to be called. Uh, well, it's going to be called Rainbow Provisions. I already bought the URL, but Love excited it. about that. So I think that's an opportunity that it might end up being something that's good for uh, one month, as there's just this huge amount of increased demand, or we might end up with a new business um, after this is all through if we figure out a few things. So have that you? Part of it is certainly exciting. Um, yeah, but. Have you, have you, do you think you've moved beyond kind of that initial phase of just shock and um, maybe even denial to uh, looking at some of these, you know, these, these, these innovations, these things, these changes you guys are trying to make quickly? Are, do you have a sense of excitement? Do you have a sense of hope right now? Or do you still, are you still you know, kind of reeling from you know, the reality? It's a good question. I'm not sure what it is. I think I wake up each morning or like in the fog of the morning and... I kind of don't remember if it's real or not that this is happening. So I think that's, I mean, that, that's continually happening each morning. Um, I definitely think there's a lot of energy and excitement just because we know we have to bring revenue in the door and we want to keep everything going uh, from kind of the staff we've got here. Sure. Um, but I don't think we have any idea what like the time frame that this thing is going to last is. And for that reason, I mean, I don't think you can... I wouldn't want to invest like any significant amount of money into any of these businesses because the the platform everything's so up in the air, um, and I, I think probably that's the way most people are. So, what can we do with what we have right now? I mean, we're selling food that are literally sitting on these shelves downstairs. Um, it's a little bit of a cluster to try to get like the operations side buttoned up quickly, where where we aren't used to being a delivery company and. Uber and DoorDash and all these companies have spent, I don't know, millions, if not tens or tens of millions figuring out like slick systems and we're just doing it out of sheer grit. Yeah. Um, so at some point that will not work. I mean, people will, will kind of get fed up with, with that, but no, we don't know. Have don't you, know what uh, the next I, I mean, I'm sure you, you like. guys have a, a group of advisors that, that help with the business and, and um, you know, obviously this being, you know, so unprecedented, it, it, nobody really knows what or how to your point how long but are you finding uh, you know in your own network uh, maybe atlanta specifically or, i mean are, are you able to reach out to folks and and you know just share these questions these thoughts these concerns i mean if you guys need to get something up and moving quickly do you feel like you've got the support that's there yeah i mean it's amazing the, the a lot of silver linings like you said one of them is like if you call somebody with an idea that has like some inkling of making sense people are just like yeah let's do that so that's been fun whether it's nonprofits, big companies everything in between i think people are picking up the phone and willing to try anything um and like you said i mean exciting is seemingly the wrong word but it, it's definitely exciting to, to be going through all of that talking to people that um in our previous world we're, we're just managing huge budgets or huge projects, et cetera, et cetera. They're all kind of in the same boat, just sometimes a bigger scale, sometimes not quite as impacted, but there's really not anyone that I've talked to that's like, yeah, not really impacted. You're either like 
so I'm friends with the guys at Fresh Harvest, which is a grocery delivery. They're just like slammed. And their problem is like their business wasn't made to scale 4X in one week. So they're trying their hardest. But then you got other people that more like restaurant side that have nothing kind of to do. They're, 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 they've got literally four people sitting there to do pickups for eight yeah. people that day. It's just kind of a frustrating situation. Well, I'm curious. I mean, you know, we've got friends up. I'm in Alpharetta and, and know the guys at Maven Group and, and um, you know, Taylor, who we featured on the show at Holmes. Just trying to think through creative ways where, you know, we can even, you know, get those guys to, to I mean, what, what is the opportunity now um, for them to change quickly so that they, you know, we can't have all these folks dying out. Um, I, I don't know. Are you guys, are you working with restaurants directly? Is there, is there any, again, yeah. whether it's a pop tail kind of menu or something like that? Yeah, we're trying to. I think we're trying to figure all that out. I think everyone is. I mean, we we can deliver meals, but we can't do it more efficiently than Uber Eats. So we're trying to figure out like a system that they could bulk make something so it makes it a little easier on their labor and then we get it out to people. It's maybe not quite like you get to pick exactly what you order, but it's just like a basic four-person meal. I think we'll, we'll have something like that relatively soon. But yeah, I think the restaurants are all... I mean, I know we're partners in Wonder Kid and uh, Grind Out, Alex from Grind House needed a, a juicer. So he came up, used our juicer the other day because he was trying to sell some margaritas. So it's just like, in that sense, it's just figuring out what are we going to do next and then uh, kind of doing it. And it's weird because you don't want to invest too much in an idea. You, you literally just want to put that idea out there. I need to make like between one and $2,000 a day basically is where most of these restaurants are just to like pay rent, pay the three, four people they've got there. And that's almost becomes a game of like, well, if I sell seven more peanut butter and jelly sandwiches to my friend down the street, it's just a lot different scale than like you're working yeah. on marketing campaigns and you're working on like ideas of how to compete. It's literally just like, who do I know that might buy something in the next 35 minutes? Yeah. No, we're, we're in the same, we're in the same boat. And I think, you know, you guys are zagging and we're zagging. And if, if you zag too quickly, um, you know, you have a half baked idea and then you, you feel like, oh shit, I've wasted all that time. Um, so one, you know, I think back to 2017 when, um, you could still stand within six feet of a person you didn't like. Uh, let alone someone you, you did. Um, and I think about why we first approached you guys. I mean, I met you, I think, Stephen, in 2010 or 11 or 12, actually, at uh, South by Southwest um, when sure you had did. one of your, your first carts. Um, but I, I, one of the things, that, again, I, I look at the rainbow behind you, and one of the things that is the most memorable is what you had to say. And, and how you said it, and this idea of these unexpected moments of happiness, these umos that really kind of were the bedrock of your brand and what you guys do. So talk a little bit about that, because I don't know if people watch our show. Yeah, so um, I think people get really caught up in creating a company purpose, or you don't have a company your own purpose I guess it seems so intense and we, we went through the exercise of trying to think of what it should be for our company um, and came up with something that we had kind of been doing all along which is uh, trying to create unexpected moments of happiness so it's a really simple idea of um, brightening somebody's day whether it is one of my favorite examples is I used to work on a street corner um, in Atlanta, North Avenue, North Highland, and it's a pretty tight street corner. There's a lot of car accidents there, so I would just bring people uh, pops at, as they're kind of bickering with each other about whose fault it was. Uh, but I think that kind of embodies the idea. It's just a simple opportunity to make somebody's day. It doesn't have to be about popsicles. It could be really about anything. Uh, and so trying to expand that into kind of everything we do, just this very simple moment um, of pleasure or a smile or anything really. So it's it's interesting though because when we think about like you know your episode was one of our favorite one of my favorite episodes I think just the way it was shot and the way we were able to showcase that and kind of capture just that that essence of the popsicle and what you guys bring 
Yeah. Uh, and then I, I think about that now and the irony of, of kind of, you know, that with all of this stuff that's going on, everybody goes, you know, this is going to be, I think, you know, I think this is going to be really great. I think people are going to kind of reset their values and remember what's important and, and, and it's like slow down and simplify. And then, and like, I, I'm like, yeah, but I'm really stressed out and scared right now. So like, you know, how do you, you know, it's, it's, it's so, it's so ironic because it's yeah. true and what you guys stand for and what your product brings, you know, really is what we need right now. And yet there's this tremendous struggle to, to do just that. So, I mean, how does yeah. that, how does that make you, I mean, do you think about that or have you felt the same way? Yeah. I mean, I do think there, yeah, there, I think the amount of silver linings that whether it's, uh, I just had a baby and now instead of worrying about my job, I'm going to be able to be a hundred percent present or, I mean, I don't have kids, so I'm hearing the, the schooling thing is probably an appreciation for uh, how hard that work is. But yeah, I mean, I think there's definitely this uh, both, I mean, I know I've been calling my parents a lot more. Um, I, well, I went before I kind of thought maybe I shouldn't be seeing them as much. I was, I was going out there a lot more. So I think there is like this thought of community in general, family, community, and, and the importance of of kind of being there for each other. And I've seen that with our staff here. It's like this weird mix. We're like a pretty close group, but it's the, it's, it's, it's the antithesis of our core values to like go by and not like give someone a high five or something, but that is, uh, the thoughtful thing to do in this situation. So, um, it's weird. I think to, to answer your question, I think, yeah, people are looking for simple pleasures. Uh, like I said, we bought, we, we, we threw together like just pouring our pop mix into a half gallon jug, 22 Dixie cups and 22 pop sticks and people can buy that online and it's just like, that's a pretty like wholesome activity to do with your family and Absolutely. people are receiving <laughs> you, that whereas and you can like, add And you can add alcohol to it. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. But maybe a month no, ago people would have rolled their eyes at it a little bit but right now I'm like, yeah, I mean, that'd be nice so, for us to have something to do together. So we can, can we, can we buy that? Because my, my girls, you know, I've got a nine to 11 year old, two girls and, and just yesterday they were asking my wife to, uh, to make popsicles. So she's like, I don't have any forms. I don't really have any forms, but so can, but could we, I mean, do you, can I buy the mix right now or? Yeah. 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 It's on our, it's on our store. I mean, it's pretty DIY. We have Dixie cups. Um, That's we don't have like perfect. molds or anything. And we'll, we'll fly it up right now. Well, it's, it's on the screen right now. Wow. Looks great. I can't believe we came up with that. <laughs> um, so, you know, given that you guys are in a crisis mode and you are trying actively in everything you do to make, to make happiness, to bring joy together, um, how is social distancing and, and the cart, how, how are they going together on the street when you see people? Yeah, so the carts are all but non-existent. We'd have probably a hundred carts out on a weekend that like we're coming up, we'll probably have two. And they act more as um, hopefully, ideally passerby. We certainly aren't encouraging people to be out. Um, so there's discounts on bulk, uh, change gloves for every interaction, sanitize. It's like both a uh, health thing, protect ourselves and protect the other people, uh, but making sure we're like outwardly doing that so everyone can see it. And that's the same on the deliveries, which we're doing. Um, change gloves every delivery, sanitize your hands. Um, when you're, like when you don't have the gloves on when you're driving to the next spot. So that's like, that's like number one. Uh, we're trying not to have too many people into the office. I'm here now. Um, there's got to be some people here to pack deliveries and other people here to pick up deliveries. We're just trying to minimize kind of like the path crossing. Cross. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's that, that's where we're at, and uh, obviously paying close attention as things develop for uh, different recommendations and all that. Well, I mean, speaking of on a you know unexpected moments of happiness how, how are you doing how is how is your happiness how is your stress level um what could we do to help i'd say so we do energy checks at meetings and it, it, it helps you i think to check in with yourself obviously so this morning i gave myself a nine which is pretty darn good um in general i think i've been closer to a five or six in most of the times just because it's 
and, and more like inwardly by myself. I think I kind of have a role to not be that when I'm as much as I can when I'm at people. I think they can tell I'm stressed like you could Adam earlier as I was trying to get the uh, sound equipment to work. Um, but yeah, I think I just, it's just a stressful, scary thing, but I don't think that's a productive reaction. Um, so if I'm meditating or thinking about it, I try to recognize that as much as I can. Um, and I think we all learn early on the saying of, I mean, control what you can control. Don't, don't spill over, don't cry over spilled milk, however you want to look at it. It's this idea that we're now in this. Um, so if there is this opportunity for you to reconnect with people in your family, within your house, heck, if you talk to people more on Skype that you haven't talked to for 10 years, but now everyone's use the time. I mean, I, I would be very shocked if there's not like a plethora of books coming out directly after this. Like I, if I get to and the point where we're like shut down, babies, if I get like shut, shut down, I know I'll just want to start writing. Uh, but I'm hoping, I mean, I think distribution is, is, is pretty essential. Uh, but yeah, and I don't have any, I don't need any help. I just think understanding that the person next to you is going through the exact same thing and that this is zero per, no one's fault, um, hopefully brings us a little bit better, uh, together as a community. Yeah. Well, now, with all this, I was just curious, where's, where's, uh, where's your brother's head and all this? And is, is he actually showing up to work now? He, uh, he isn't, he's working at home, but we, we have a 9.30 huddle with the leadership team every morning. So I know that he's, uh, he's still there and we are communicating a lot. We're building, we're not coders and we're trying to build a website. So, uh, no frustrations there that could be imaginable, but both pretty, he, he's doing all right. I think, um, what you were saying earlier, Adam, about like too many ideas and then having them stick. Our, our dynamic has always been like. I'll just say everything that comes to my mind and then Nick will be like, nah, nah, it's kind of stupid. Spoken uh, like but, a true attorney. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But he has, he has, uh, it, it's been good. I think, I think, um, I really do think we're going to come out the other side. I think we're going to be all better for it. I think our company is going to be looking quite a bit different. Um, sorry to get into this last minute, but we're rolling into like, more neighborhood partners instead of us controlling all the carts where we'll be uh, signing up different neighborhood partners, kind of people that are uh, seen in their neighborhood. So whether it's Grant Park or a uh, suburb of Nashville or whatever, people will be kind of be signing up to do that as well. So we're looking at all these opportunities that in the past were like, oh, that doesn't sound like work we want to do. And um, looking at them in a new light, I guess, which is the, I think the way you have to be kind of reacting right now what uh what flavor of pop is the global pandemic flavor i mean what 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 is the most delicious thing to be quarantined with in your opinion these days probably cookies and cream but what i'm worried about is it's if we think it's hot out if we're quarantined in middle of august in atlanta our delivery sales are going to be much more important than they are right now. So I'm just kind of counting on that. Uh, I'm not counting on it happening because I'm hoping everything's back, back to normal. But I know that the sales will increase as it heats up almost almost no matter what. So we'll just... And hopefully the virus will die too. So, I mean... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. According to the president, it'll all be over by Easter. So rest <laughs> assured. <laughs> oh, we had to... <laughs> <laughs> to drop a little. Is that is that mean it's not? In there. <laughs> does that mean it's not going to happen? Okay. Well, I I do think that King of Pops is precisely what the world needs right now, and I think happiness is what the doctor ordered. So, hey, Stephen, thank you so much for your time today. Um, thank you for you know sharing your 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 perspective, your your stress, your ups and your downs, and um, we'll see you on the other side. No doubt about it. You guys too. Everyone need, we need more things to consume. So keep keep doing your good work as well. Appreciate it. Thanks, man. Right. And for Thanks all of you all. watching after 12, uh, tune in. We're going to be doing a lot more of these. And uh, final words from my co-host, Josh Rush. <clears throat> I wish I had a pop tail right now. It would make me happy. Thank you, Stephen. Cheers, Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. <laughs>